Hello everyone. Today I have a very special guest, Hannah Arendt. It is a great pleasure to be here on YouTube, over 30 years after my death, with this amazing animation from Extranormal.com. Wikipedia states that Hannah Arendt was an influential German-American political theorist. She has often been described as a philosopher, although she refused that label on the grounds that Philosophy is concerned with man in the singular, because my work centers on the fact that men, not man, live on the earth and inhabit the world. I am therefore a political theorist. Arendt's work deals with the nature of power, and the subjects of politics, authority, and totalitarianism. Today Hannah will read an excerpt from her essay The Crisis in Education. Although written in the 1960s, I think most viewers will find it even more relevant today than 50 years ago. In addition, it has served as the intellectual basis for the producer of this video, SLMRCS's total rejection of the educational model we currently have for children. In the essay Hannah details three basic assumptions we have about children and education. The first assumption is that there exists a child's world and a society formed among children that are autonomous and must insofar as possible be left to them to govern. Adults are only there to help with this government. The authority that tells the individual child what to do and what not to do rests with the child group itself. That's all they can think about is trying to fit in and trying to, you know, wear the cool clothes and do this the right way and be with the popular. This produces, among other consequences, a situation in which the adult stands helpless before the individual child and out of contact with him. The adult can only tell the child to do what he likes, and then prevent the worst from happening. I would like to interject for a second. Hannah says adults can prevent the worst from happening, but this simply is not always the case. The real and normal relations between children and adults arising from the fact that people of all ages are always simultaneously together in the world, are thus broken off. And so it is of the essence of this first basic assumption that it takes into account only the group and not the individual child. As for the child in the group, he is of course rather worse off than before. By before, you mean, before being thrust from the world of normal relations between himself and adults, and into the child's world. Yes. For the authority of a group, even a child group, is always considerably stronger and more tyrannical than the severest authority of an individual person can ever be. If one looks at it from the standpoint of an individual child, his chances to rebel, or to do anything on his own hook, are practically nil. He no longer finds himself in a very unequal contest with a person who has to be sure, absolute superiority over him, but in contest with whom he can nevertheless count on the solidarity of other children, that is, of his own kind. Rather he is in the position, hopeless by definition, of a minority of one confronted by the absolute majority of all the others. There are very few grown people who can endure such a situation, even when it is not supported by external means of compulsion. Children are simply and utterly incapable of it. Therefore, by being emancipated from the authority of adults the child has not been freed but has been subjected to a much more terrifying and truly tyrannical authority, the tyranny of the majority. In any case the result is that the children have been so to speak banished from the world of grown-ups. They are either thrown back upon themselves or handed over to the tyranny of their own group. <laughs> Two girls in a ferocious fight with other kids cheering them on. Against the group, because of its numerical superiority, they cannot rebel. With which the group, because they are children, they cannot reason. And out of which they cannot flee to any other world because the world of adults is barred to them. The reaction of the children to this pressure tends to be either conformism or juvenile delinquency and is frequently a mixture of both. 